So I think we can start. It's four o'clock. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks a lot for being here with us. My name is Marie-Pierre Pauch. I'm head of the Luxembourg Learning Center, the library of the University of Luxembourg. And at the same time, I have the great pleasure of being the chair of the Liber Architecture Group. So thanks a lot for your participation. This afternoon, uh, my colleague Ignace Sibonet and Michael Munich and myself, we are three members of the Liber LAC Group. We have the great pleasure to introduce the Library Building in Europe website. This website was launched was launched in 2020 and provide access to a database of library buildings information. But before we start, let me share a short story. 15 years ago, I met for the first time the architect in charge of the construction of my building. And you can see a picture of this building behind me. Um, and when I met the architect, I had three books with me. I don't know if you can see it. No, not really. Sorry for the picture, but I have the book with me. Um, and these three books were, were the last three publication of the Liber Architecture Group, published in 2002. 2004 and 2006. These three books were full of rich information, pictures, and data about the last library project in Europe at this time. It was a great support to me in the discussion with the architect that I had for 10 years. No, these books are no longer published. They have been replaced by the database that we are going to introduce you today. And I hope this database will be helpful to you as the books have been to me at this time. This afternoon, two speakers, member of our Liberla group, will introduce the database. First, my German colleague, Professor Dr. Michael Munich. Michael is head of the public services department and deputy director of the library of Karlsruhe Institute for Technology. Um, Michael will give some information about our group, about the seminar, about um, the evolution from printed reports to the current database. And then my, co my uh, colleague from Spain, Ignacy. Ignacy Bonnet is an architect at Library Architecture Unit Deputacio de Barcelona. And Ignacy will give some information about the design process, the maintenance, uh, the future of the database. And Ignacy will explain us who could join the database or can we join the database? And he will share all the information about the procedure for submission. After that, uh, Michael will uh, do a short comparison, comparison of uh, several libraries, Europe database. And after this presentation, of course, you will be able to ask your question. So, Michael, if you want to share your presentation. Yeah. Thank you. You must finish yours first before I can start. It's finished, Michael, I think. No, it's still there. The invitation, you mean? The you must stop your screen sharing. Ah, OK, OK, can, OK. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Uh, 
I don't see the button it's, to it stop. Is still, it's somewhere at the top or at the bottom. There's, a, a, I think, a red, a red button stop, stop something. Stop share, yes. <laughs> Or you close if you maybe if you close the stop PowerPoint. share. Yes, it's, yeah, it's done. No, it's it's done. okay. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay, no problem. So so I think you should see now a slide: library buildings in Europe. Is that you can see it? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, everybody, also from me. Um, thank you, Marie-Pierre, for the introduction. And in the next few minutes, I would like to give you a short uh, overview of the origins of our database and also of our Libre Architecture Group, its origins and its uh, features. Um, the Libre Architecture Group is part of, of Libre and uh, just a few words about Lieber for all people who are not so um, much into the history of Lieber. Uh, let me know that, uh, let, I, I tell you that in 1968, there was uh, an IFLA working group and uh, it, was, uh, it was established for university, regional and national libraries in Europe. And uh, three years later, Lieber was launched under the umbrella of the Council of Europe, not the EU, but the Council of Europe, uh, with the French name Ligue de Bibliothèque Européenne de Recherche, and uh, with the abbreviation, the nice abbreviation Lieber, which means free and also means book, and quite nice. The first meeting of the Lieber was in Strasbourg in 1971, and there were 14 countries uh, participating, uh, only from Western Europe. That was still the time of the Cold War, as you can remember, as you have heard if you're younger. younger. Um, so the, at the beginning, it was only West European countries, but later it, uh, it's, the, the influence has grown. The first chairman was from Switzerland, from the University Library Lausanne, Jean-Pierre Clavel. And uh, Lieber started with conferences and workshop on uh, the subjects which are relevant or were relevant to librarians at that time, such as cooperative cataloging, retro uh, cataloging financing model, uh, how to handle new media like CD-ROM and whatever in, evolved in the last uh, uh, 50 years. And uh, one of the first conferences in fact was uh, also in Lausanne on the subject of library construction, uh, then at the cooperation with the IFLA building committee and that was, so to say, the beginning of the library, the very first activity of, of uh, Lieber in library building. Um, today we have the Lieber, as you see on the right hand side. Um, there are several working groups today, then it was working parties, today it's called working groups, and they are uh, located in several strategic fields of actions, such as innovative scholarly communication, digital skills and services, research infrastructure is an, another big topic. And um, if, if the participants could uh, just uh, um, mute their microphones that would be nice because I heard some banging in the in the in the background it's, it's a bit uh, annoying thank you um, research infrastructure is is the main field where we have uh, data science linked open data research data management and also the field of architecture where our group is is active and the Lieber architecture group is one of the uh, most active groups in, or was one of the most active groups in the past. And it has the following goals. Uh, our goals are to bring librarians and construction projects together to give ideas about how to do construction building, just as Marie-Pierre has uh, 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 told you um, a few minutes ago how helpful that can be. And then we want to show and to promote new concepts and trends in library building. And we also want to collect information ab about library building projects. 
And so we want to promote the exchange of experiences between librarians and architects. And our, our Liber Architecture Group was formed around a series of seminars on library construction. And the first seminar was in 1980 in Heidelberg. Uh, it was organized by a pretty famous um, a librarian in Germany, Elma Mittler, then at the University Library Heidelberg in 1980. And he was chairman for more than 20 years of the Liber Architecture Group. By the way, I met him two weeks ago in Karlsruhe and he's still well and uh, in good health and sends greetings to all of you. So after Heidelberg, there, established, uh, there was established a biennial uh, schedule every two years. We, uh, there was an, uh, uh, a seminar in different countries. In the last years, uh, there were 18 seminars in 14 countries, such in London or in Freiburg, and you see a lot of places. Sometimes um, the seminars had um, uh, a topic, uh, 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 enveloping topic like uh, renaissance of the library and sometimes they didn't, but um, that's, the, that's the number of seminars. And with these seminars came also a publication series after each seminar there was almost each seminar. We published um, a, a booklet about the presentations held at the seminar and this also included most of the new interesting library buildings in Europe. I show you, uh, you see here two examples of that. The left, the example on the left hand, the image is from Karlsruhe Library where I'm at the moment. Um, until 2014, we had these printed documentation and uh, they were based on uh, also, also first on the, on the talks given, but also on extensive uh, questionnaires, which were uh, given to the, to the participating uh, libraries. And they, as you can see from one side of this um, uh, uh, questionnaire, it is very detailed. Uh, there's a lot of questions about uh, space, about uh, capacities, and also about uh, building details. And uh, from uh, 2012 and 2016, this data from the questionnaire was then put into a database. In 2016, the printed documentation were canceled and published only as PDF. And from 2017, as I mentioned, the data is, was then held in a database. The database was hosted in Prague at the National Library of Technology. And that was the beginning, but uh, it, um, it showed that the database was not, was not very, very well suited for end user queries. It was more an internal database like a cataloging database. So in 2019, the data was migrated to a up-to-date WordPress system, um, a web-based WordPress system uh, that is hosted in Barcelona. And in 2020, so that is last year, we could launch our website librarybuildings.eu, library buildings in Europe, which uh, is the, the database we will talk about now. Um, yeah, this is, that's not important. And with that, I can finish my introduction and hand over to my colleague, Ignacy Bonnet at uh, Barcelona, and he will give you more details about our database. Thank you, Michel. Can you hear me yeah. properly? Okay. I'll uh, I'll, I'll share. Well, I, first of all, <clears throat> thank you, everyone, and thank you, Marie Pierre and Michelle, for the for your explanations. As as Marie Pierre said, I'm going to talk about the main features of the website and the design process and the contents uh, maintenance uh, work. Uh, let me open the presentation. Can you see the slide? Okay. It's perfect. Okay, thank you, Mikel. Uh, so first I will talk a, a bit about the, the design process and the, 
and the main features and then the uh, the maintenance and also the procedure for submission of new libraries if someone is interested uh, about the design process um, we started with the idea well th there was a, a long uh, um, discussion inside the inside the liver architecture uh, uh, group about uh, giving a new uh, image to the website uh, which had a very interesting uh, contents but we wanted to um, uh, change the presentation the 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 interface. So we started working on this during the summer uh, 2019. And in September uh, uh, that year, we had a development and content management plan. In October 2019, uh, there was the approval from the Liber Board Committee. We started uh, working, well, th there was a commission to uh, uh, to a team called La Tempesta who developed uh, the the, the website and database, and they are based in Barcelona. We worked together with them for four months, and uh, at, at February 2020, it was uh, more or less finished. There was some final adjustments and testing, which was done from March to May. And during those months, during that spring, we worked mainly on content migration. And uh, as Michael said, it was launched in June 2020. I want to uh, uh, ex emphasize that uh, it was the team was uh, a, a triangle with a liberal board who give, uh, gave the approval of the project and, and the funding for the development. Uh, Tempesta guys who were um, really uh, striking with their proposals and uh, their hard work and uh, Liber team uh, who uh, were um, well working as well and together with with La Tempesta team to um, well to have the new website. Uh, in September uh, 2019 we presented this uh, document you see at the right side at the right side of the slide to the liver board and some of the main ideas were of course the goal of the website which was uh, to become the main information resource on library architecture projects in europe but uh, uh, it was oriented to librarians and architects but anyway to anyone uh, interested in this uh, this uh, subject and uh, there was always the idea of transform the library model with uh, new designs, new ideas, uh, new proposals. But we wanted this data which, which was very rich in content but uh, as Miguel said it was more like an internal use uh, data. We wanted it to be more user friendly uh, to to improve user exploration uh, based in a discovery paradigm. And it, we wanted it to be very visual, very intuitive and very clear. Um, so uh, together with uh, Tempesta team, we, we worked on these uh, main features that the website should have. Uh, it sh should be based on images, uh, we wanted uh, to find libraries through a map, or a political map, so uh, all the data would be geolocated. Uh, uh, we wanted to have additive search, so um, be able to filter different um, criteria to have uh, different results and uh, have um, uh, results on the fly while you are searching and you are um, changing the criteria of search. We want to use tag, tags. Well, we, we, at that moment, we talked at, about tag cloud, which, which uh, finally isn't a cloud, but it, it's, uh, it works with tags. And well, some, some more other um, ideas that I already said, like user, being user-friendly, have, have the advanced search. We wanted to 
be able to download PDF reports for every library and also to keep uh, the value of uh, using facts and figures to compare and uh, to, to have um, a global vision of uh, different kinds of libraries, for instance, university libraries, uh, national libraries or whatever. Uh, and also we wanted, uh, I forgot to say, uh, we wanted to have related content when you are looking uh, at some information, it's good to have some related content uh, which would be this the same similar projects, uh, pro libraries with a similar surface, uh, with a similar budget, uh, same kind of libraries, etc. So uh, while these were the main ideas at the beginning of the process, uh, at that moment we said, okay, first of all, we need the decision from the Liber Executive Board on funding this project. Uh, at that moment, we were talking about sponsorship, which finally uh, we we decide not to look for sponsorship and Liber uh, uh, assumed all the costs. And uh, while well, we made a commission to work in the development, uh, and then we should um, work on uh, a list of tags to be able to uh, yeah, structure all the contents with these tags. There was also some work to do of uh, uh, collecting new um, projects from recent years, but because the database was stopped in 2016, uh, and we wanted to get new library buildings. So uh, a part of developing the website, uh, we had to look for new information for the opening of the of the new website. And then, well, there were there had to be some content curation and some to upload uh, the final presentation. At that moment, we were thinking on six months calendar, and this is a yeah a, a schedule we had at that time. And well, uh, is if had an evolution, and while we were already working with. Uh, with uh, these guys from La Tempesta, uh, well, it became more complex. They, they, you can see here the lists of different tasks that had been done during these months. It was very intense because we started at no, the end of November and it had to be done in February. Finally, I think it was finished around more or less the end of February, beginning of March, I think. And then, uh, as I said before, we worked on the contents and the launch was made on June 2020. Well, uh, this is an overview of the design process. Um, not, too, uh, not to be too long, I will go now for the main features. Afterwards, if we have some more time, maybe we can talk about a, a bit more about the design process if you have any questions. Well, uh, about the main features, maybe what I will do, I will do is just share uh, share the another window. Let me stop sharing this, and I will go to the website and share the window of the website, and then I think it will be more. Can, can you see it now? Yeah. Great, thank you, Miguel. Uh, I think this is better than the PDF, uh, the, the PowerPoint. Well, this is the home page. As you can see, uh, the first thing is that uh, images are important. Uh, at the home page, you can see, for, first of all, this slide with the recent posts that uh, automatically uh, are passing by and at the bottom you we can see the older posts and we can load more and can load more okay at the left hand we have the main menu and uh, we have a window for exploration we can explore by location we can explore by list or uh, we can explore by mosaic if this brings us to the second 
um, item of the menu. Uh, this item is the um, for filter the kind of by with different categories. For instance, you can filter by the year of opening. You can filter by kind of library or kind of archive. And uh, we have some results on the go wh while we are filtering. For instance, let me put this. Now we are searching from 2010 to 2014 and we have these results. We can see these results by list, which is what we are looking, what we are seeing now, but we can also see it by mosaic or we can see it through the map. This map, of course, <laughs> it can be amplified and we can see the results. Uh, I, can, I will reset the filter we had. I will, I will clear all the filters so we, we can see all the libraries published in the map. And now I will um, put the full screen view. We can navigate uh, the map and do the zoom. And I think this is a, a great feature. And then once we select a library, we can go to the library and we arrive to the uh, main file of the library. Okay. And these are uh, the main informations. When we go to an image, there's a new menu uh, sorry, a new presentation just for the images, but we can just visit and uh, this information. Well, we there is in, in the library information there is some basic information, some location uh, information, and we can see the context where where is it some text about main motivations and objectives on the short description. There is information about publications, about awards, and some data and special features, additional features. Um, I'm going back to the main menu. Another thing that we wanted uh, to, to have is not to not to go back when you're navigated. Uh, when, when you're exploring, uh, you all can always go ahead and jump to another thing and go back to the beginning, but never going back, never doing the clicks uh, and doing the, the way you have done. So uh, I think we, we, it works how it is now. Okay, we have seen the homepage. We have seen the the, the this filter page, and now we're going to the tax. The tax, uh, well, this was an important decision during the design process. We uh, decided to put the tax to the images and not to the libraries. So when we are at this page, we have all the images and we can decide um, what are we looking for. For instance, well, uh, let me tell you before, there is some groups of images. The, most of the images are photos, but there are some renderings. For instance, there is one rendering or there are some floor plans. Let me, let me, this is the rendering or just let me select the floor plans. These are the floor plans. Okay, we will keep, let's say, we will keep the photos because we are looking, we are supposed, we are supposedly looking for photos and we 
are interested in I don't know uh, there is different categories there is a general category about architecture like facade natural light natural light or acoustics there is uh, another category which is construction there is another about equipment about furniture about library spaces uh, and about materials so for instance we can decide we are interested in learning spaces and when we click to learning spaces automatically we see the images um, with this um, item so uh, when we go to an image for instance this one uh, and we are interested on this i think somehow we can go to the library but i don't remember sorry Okay, it's here, it's the click here. It's this here, it, you can jump from the image to the library. So we clicked, uh, we clicked at this uh, sign, blue sign here, and then we jump to the library, uh, which is this uh, R, uh, R, R, C -S -A library, which is, in Dublin. Okay, let's go back to the tag list. So I think you have a, a general idea of how it works. We, ca we could select several tags and then uh, we are closing the, the selection. Following the main menu, we will find the next one, which is resources. Well, of course, we wanted to have all the PDF uh, old PDFs that Marie Pierre talked about at the beginning. And uh, while well, we made a short explanation here, and we have the, the three groups of PDFs of old PDF 2012, 2014, and 2016. Uh, if there are more resources, we can upload it here. We have also some, let's say, partners, some good friends. Uh, designing libraries, uh, they published some information of our website and we have a good relation with them, with them. and uh, I think uh, they publish very, we think they publish very interesting stuff, so we, we thought it was important that they were here and also uh, libraryplanet.net, so if we find some more resources, uh, we will put them here. Uh, well, now I am logged in. I will I will log out because I think some options here. Uh, sorry, um, let me go to the. Okay, so these are the options, and finally you would find uh, this uh, option here, which is just the private area for members of the group or contributors that want to uh, publish information. Uh, here we have another menu, which is uh, the same one we have at the, let, at the left side. And while well, not to talk too long, I think I will go back to the presentation and, fi and finish my explanation with the, with the PowerPoint. So just a moment, please. I'm going to share the PowerPoint. Yeah, it's here. We have seen the main, the home page, the library page, the filters page. Let me tell you something else. I, I would. I could be talking about this website for hours and I, I forget many things, but maybe afterwards we can talk a bit more. Uh, this, uh, there's average values for library selected. All the numbers we have like total floor area, total cost or shelving capacity. Uh, we thought it would be a good uh, information to have uh, average values for the select libraries once we have filtered. So this is an important feature also. 
this. We have seen it already, the tags and the images, and the different ways of displaying results. So we have seen the map, uh, the, we have seen the list, I think, and there's also the mosaic, but this is just the, the, the interface, how the interface shows the same information in different ways. Library file, okay. Maintenance and content management. This is the last, nearly the last of my, the last point. Uh, when we launched the website, we, when, when we started the project, we wanted to migrate the 61 old projects uh, that we had in the old database. And we thought that we would, uh, have from 10 to 16 new entries from the 16 to 20 period. Uh, finally, I have to say an important decision was that we would only publish libraries with good images. So from the 61 existing projects, just a few ones were published because we only had images of some of them. And uh, maybe this was the hardest part for us, we didn't reach the amount of entries, of new entries we wanted to have. So uh, we had some more, but not, not, uh, not, we didn't get our initial goal. And for maintenance, we wanted to have new, 12 new entries every year, around one entry every month. And it's hard to keep this pace. Uh, to, to, the, to do this work, we did, uh, and let's say, it, we call it editorial committee. I mean, it's it's the the three of us, Karen Latimer, uh, Mikael, and me, who are let's say taking care of these contents, and uh, we are let's say planning uh, every next publication. For the migration, uh, we worked on uh, some Excel sheets, uh, and this is one image of the 61 libraries with all the data that was uh, revised uh, and checked and that everything was correct. We had, we did this for the general info, but uh, there, was, well, there was also a list for images, a list for awards, a list for publications, a list uh, of, well, different lists and a list for architects. So uh, while well, all these lists were checked, all these lists were checked, and uh, uh, they were used for the to to fit the new website, the new database. Uh, so right now, uh, when it, when it was launched, we opened uh, it was launched with thirty eight published libraries. Right now, we only have forty three published libraries, but we have forty one drafts because there's a lot of libraries that don't have images or we have some information and we are working on them. And as I said, this is the hard, maybe the hardest part of it to, to keep uh, feeding the website. And uh, as some colleagues know from, from our group, it's, it's hard to, to keep this space. Finally, if you want to publish, well, uh, uh, an, a library of your city, your country, of course, uh, we are always looking for inspiring libraries. Please let us know about them. Uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, yeah, we are interested on in, in this information. Just tell us, you can contact us through our website or you can just email any of the group members. You will find our contact at the website specifying the name, the city, the country, the year of opening and the website of the library. I have to say that, uh, oops, sorry, uh, a, final decisions, a final decision will be made by the group. So to, to be sure that uh, the quality of the publications, to ensure the quality of the publications. And another thing, important thing to take into account is that uh, we need good quality images and that they should be uh, published under uh, CC uh, Creative Commons license. 
according to LIBER's open access publication guidelines. And that's, that's something that uh, sometimes it takes us some work to get this permission and uh, to get also the names of the photographers that have to be uh, published next to every image. Well, I think this is more or less everything I wanted to say. So um, I stopped sharing the screen and I will uh, give the word to uh, Michelle for the next point. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ignasi. So I will take over again. Um, yeah. Okay, so you can see a slide. Yeah. Okay. Um, just in addition to what uh, Ignasi told you about our uh, library Europe database and website. I want to uh, share some information about uh, two other uh, in, um, information sites about library buildings in uh, Europe. Um, yeah. One of them is the designing libraries in UK. Um, it was already mentioned by uh, Ignasi. It was established some years ago in 2004 in the UK by the Museums, Libraries and Archives Council. And it collects information about all aspects of building and planning libraries. Um, and it also has a, a database, library projects it's called. and. Uh, when I looked at it last week, it was 580 new buildings or conversions or renovations or other um, projects about libraries in UK and Ireland. And they have all types of libraries uh, as well, academic as well as public libraries. And um, the research possibilities are much more limited than those in our um, LIBER database, you can basically filter by a country, which are two countries, Ireland and Great Britain, and you can select if you want to look for public libraries or academic, and then you have a type of project like renovation, new building or um, opening year. And uh, very similar is a, a German uh, equivalent, it's called uh, Bibliotheksbauten. It's a block and it's maintained by the building commission of the German Library Association, which I am part of. And uh, we started that in 2020. And uh, the scope is uh, the German speaking countries, Germany, Austria and Switzerland. But we also include interesting libraries from the rest of Europe and uh, all over the world, like uh, China. There are many interesting libraries being built in China. And we also include all types of libraries. Um, for example, and uh, it's hosted by at the website blogspot.com, which is a, by now a taken over by Google, but it's a pretty simple thing. Uh, we have a short posts with um, mostly links to articles in journals of uh, library journals or architectural journals or websites and uh, there are the in-depth information. The blog itself has only very short teasing text and some images um, to give you a, an idea if it's worth the while to look at the, at the uh, in-depth information at the sources. And the posts are all in German and also in English. And you can also do a filter, a simple filtering by library type, academic or public, and by opening year, by type of construction, and also by country. Um, the slide, uh, the screenshot is uh, is the view. When if you set the filter to Germany, then you get the new buildings in uh, Germany. And to sum that up, if you look at these three databases, you see that the Library Buildings Europe database has the focus on academic libraries. Um, there are also some uh, public libraries, but mainly uh, it's academic libraries. Um, there we have original data, especially um, 
question, question for the database. It's very detailed and therefore it's uh, possible to do specific queries and you have a uh, various methods of access, uh, searching by images, by geographic information, etc. And the other uh, two are much simpler built. Um, the Bibliotheks Bauten block is, has a focus on Germany, but also includes Europe and uh, the world. Um, we have only a few data and re refer mainly to literatures and website and also we have simple filtering possibilities and designing libraries in UK is also more basic regarding to data and uh, also more simple with the filtering process. But I wanted to share that information with you um, just to give you a broader view of uh, info if you want to have a broader view of uh, library buildings uh, outside uh, Europe and more into pub public libraries, then these resources are also very helpful. And with that, I finish my very short comparison. Thanks a lot, Ignacy, and thanks a lot, Mikhail. To be honest, I, I learned a lot <laughs> with your presentation, in particular about the, the history of the group and about the history of the, the database. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, so, um, I, I'm, no, I would like to, to invite you to the next um, Liberlac seminar. Um, the seminar uh, will be hosted by my university um, and the seminar will be uh, organized on the new campus of my university here in Luxembourg. Um, the seminar uh, will be, um, the, the, the date for the seminar will be the 27 to 29 uh, April. Uh, and this seminar is organized as, as an on-site event. So we hope <laughs> that you can organize it live. Uh, of course, with the pandemic, we, we don't know, but don't worry because we will have uh, a seminar live. And in the same times, the seminar will, will be organized on live. So don't worry if you cannot come to Luxembourg, you will be able to, to participate online. Um, but of course, the advantage uh, of a face-to-face -face event is that participants will have the opportunity to visit the new uh, university uh, library, the uni university campus, and the new uh, building of the, the National Library of Luxembourg. So it could be an advantage, of course, to, to come here in Luxembourg, but don't worry, uh, the, the seminar will be online. At the moment, the program uh, and the website uh, are not available, but I hope that next week um, it will be available. So here you, you have the address of the future website if you want to, to register and to join us. So I hope that many of you will, will participate. Um, and thank you very much for for your participation today. So now it's time for your question. So don't hesitate to activate the end or to ask your question um, in, in, the in the chat. If you don't have a question, I have a question. <laughs> uh, Michael, a question for you. Um, which kind of data uh, can we find in the, in the German block? Uh, do you, could you ex give us more information about uh, yeah. the difference? Uh, um, yeah, we have, we have very few data in the, in the block itself. It's mainly the architect who, who uh, did the, con the project and the opening data and uh, and then if it's 
easily available um, things like um, uh, space uh, covered or number of seatings or or number of uh, books in the library but we don't have a, a de defined set of of um, of data that we have with its post because it's mainly it's sort of a block where we refer to other resources where you can get the original data which is sometimes very extensive and sometimes not so very extensive and we also take some pictures from the from the mostly from the architects uh, side um, to just to give you an impression of the of the the library and and then we put in the the country and the type of the library public or academic and uh, and if it's a renovation project or a complete new building that's more or less all of it okay thank you another question maybe i i i have some some information that uh... I uh, I just received uh, uh, they they just sent me and it would be of interest. I I didn't uh, I didn't talk about the visits at the website at the library buildings in Europe, and from last year twenty uh, twenty uh, from April to December there was thirteen thousand unique visitors, and. Uh, uh, a whole uh, number of ninety-three thousand uh, visits to the to, to, to different pages, with an average of uh, seven pages per visit. Okay. So I'm not an expert about the, about uh, web uh, analytics, but I think um, well maybe someone can say if this is a good result for the first year or, or not. To me, it sounds pretty good for for first year. I have another question, Ignasi. What is for you the advantage for a library to join the database? <laughs> Very <laughs> difficult question. Sorry. No, no, no. It, I, I'm I, I'm smiling because uh, today we published a new post. For the for the Luxembourg National Library, and it has been included in the Liber Insider that we have already received this morning. And uh, if you don't mind, Marie Pierre, I will I will explain that uh, the director was really happy that it was published, and I think uh, it's simply because it's promotion for your library. I mean, you you just opened, you want to get visitors you want to get known and of course all the important efforts of investment in the building but also in all the facilities uh, have to be uh, let's say uh, have to be shown I mean there, ha there has to be a feedback for the from the users from the citizens from the city uh, from the university so well this morning I thought it was nice to 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 see the feedback from the director and, and say, oh, great, that's great that it's been published. Of course, uh, it's promotion for, for your library and uh, yeah, feedback for the people who decided to invest in the library. Yes, thank you. And another thing I wanted to say is that uh, the one of the main goals of the, of the, of this, uh, website being user friendly is to inspire we always talk about inspiration and you talked about it at the beginning uh, uh, be the inspiration for new projects uh, when you had to work uh, on the new project for uh, uh, Luxembourg Learning Center uh, you had that publication uh, people who is now working in new projects we hope that this website is useful to find inspiration, to find examples of furniture, of uh, equipment, uh, of materials, of uh, kind of spaces, different uses. 
whatever. That's why we put that effort in the tags and the images because we had very good data, the old database, but it was just data, it was words and numbers. And we wanted to uh, give uh, some more layers of information like geographic images and tags. And uh, uh, I, we think that's very important to, 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 yeah, to have this inspiration. Yeah, and, and I would like to add not only inspiration, you know, sometimes it's very good to have some data to help us to convince, you know, to, for example, to receive budget or um, yeah. to, um, to share some information with the architect or to give some example of other library uh, and to discuss that with the architect. So I think it's another kind of inspiration. Yeah, because architecture is very expensive. Uh, I work every day uh, as an architect, working with libraries every day. Uh, um, you have to have a very uh, clear idea of what we want, how big we want it, how many shelving, how many room uh, for students, uh, because every decision takes a lot of money and it has to be very... Uh, very precise uh, when when you're working on, on on a new project. And I think if if some participant today have uh, um, a, a project of new building or renovation, or I think the seminar could be a good opportunity to come and to discuss with us, with architect, and with other person with the same uh, project. It's, the, the seminar is a, it's a good opportunity for that, to exchange and to meet other person with the same project. Yep. Maybe a, a question of, of you? We don't have a lot of questions. Maybe we, are, we, are, we, we were so clear. <laughs> No. <laughs> Mikael and Yassi, do, do you want to add something or? No, I, not at the moment. <laughs> what, 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 I would, what I would say, uh, which, I, which I already said it, but uh, the content management, uh, to plan the content management and to work to find new libraries and people uh, sending you the images and get the rights and the name of the photographer. This takes a lot of work, and uh, we 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 did it before the launch because we had the launch. But then every month runs really fast, and Michael and me, well, uh, yeah, we'll know perfectly that uh, once you get the compromise of uh, keeping this updated. Uh, you have to be there every month getting new projects. And, and maybe as a global um, valoration, as a, 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 a personal um, critical view of what we've done, I would say that the, the way from the lunch until today, it has been harder than the way before the lunch. <laughs> okay. I, I joined only after the lunch, so <laughs> lounge, so I can't. I can tell that, but indeed, it's uh, the, the the issue of the copyright uh, clearing, and that is, I think, it's it's quite um, it, it takes often it's it's sort of of a obstacle yeah, to to get this information clear to put them into the database. The, the input of the other data is not very difficult of square meters and a number of seatings and shelving meters. It's not difficult, but the, the images, but the images are the, the added value in the library also of Europe. If you only have just numbers, it's not very attractive. So we hope to get many yeah. new good and impressive library projects in the next month. So if in the participants, you are working on the next uh, inspiring project, don't hesitate to contact us. 
and to share with uh, with us and with uh, all the the future uh, visitor of the website. Don't hesitate to to share the information about your your project. So if we don't have a question anymore, I think we can close the the webinar. Uh, I would like to to thanks uh, Liber of course for the. Um, the organization and I would like to, to thank Mikael and Ignacy uh, for the presentation. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, you two. Um, it was a pleasure. Uh, thank you uh, to the participant, of course. I hope a uh, good weekend for you and I hope to, to see you in Luxembourg or in another Liber conference. Thank you very much and have a nice, have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank Bye -bye. you very much. Have a nice Bye. weekend.